I have three entrepreneurs right now that are starting to put events for artists. You know what I mean? A lot of artists in the city are telling me, yo, Feeds, man, I need shows, man. Can you book me for shows and all that? But unfortunately, I noticed that, I don't know, I felt like back then there was way more events for artists. Mm -hmm. I feel like, I don't know, real promoters, shout out to um, I saw, I know my man CY was doing a few shows here and there for artists. But now, I don't know, man. I just seen like the main festival, uh, uh, you know, the, the the big, big, big artists get booked and all that, and um, you know, the ones that are more like up and coming, they have more of an issue getting booked. So when I see stuff like that, people like you guys that are actually coming up with an event, y'all got a headliner, y'all got a few other people performing, and the car looks nice, you know what I mean? That's beautiful and that's wonderful. So first thing first, I want to give you guys a big shout out for that. You know what I mean? Love you. Really appreciate that. So, and um. What's gonna happen, man? Talk to me. June thirtieth, Scylla, Joe Dolo, Absolutely. Belmont. What's oh, up? It's about to get so late. it's really important for us actually just to make oh, sure. Yeah, to make sure you're good. You yeah. good? Can you hear me? Yo, what's up, everyone? So this is the fam right here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are here and we're trying to uh, make an effort to treat Montreal people like they're the out of towners. So. We've had the privilege of being able to open for some people like the Jerry Damages, Smith & Wesson, and see how these people get treated, mm -hmm. right? Like the difference between it. So we figured mm -hmm. we want to treat Montreal people in a similar capacity. So Joe Dolo, like Sila, these guys are really making moves. The whole Astro Collective, they're like on a real wave that they're pushing it up. They were just at Metro Metro. They're really out there. So what's the difference between them and somebody from out of town? So we're like, what if we just build it around the Montreal Act, make it completely Montreal? Everybody involved in the show is not new. They're all people that have been performing for a while. They're a high caliber of talent. Mm -hmm. And we made sure that for everybody out there talking about pay to play, nobody paid to play to be on this show. If anything, we, we put out a little bread to choose who we wanted to be That's on so. the show. So if we're out there talking about it, to try to curate an experience based on what we've seen our talented people. Everybody that's seen Joe Dolo and Sila know they're gonna turn up. If you've seen Hanjo out there, ooh, Hanjo, he's a vibe, a whole character. Anu Buds always brings it. Yo, King K. Anyway, King K, absolutely. He crushes that everywhere he goes. I just saw him the other night at that Family Over Fame event. Mm -hmm. And yo, don't forget about the Underground Kings, Regulators. Regulators, Regulators Montreal. We don't yeah. forget them. <laughs> there's just a lot of people, you know, we have to go through it all, but it's like, if you haven't seen regulars, just gonna touch on that. This is the definition of an underground wave where you can't find their music online anywhere. And if you wanna know how dope they are, you literally have to go to a show mm -hmm. because you can't find it. And anybody that's been to a show knows they how dope know. it is because yeah. we are out there singing along and doing things that people who are of internet hating aren't aware of because they don't go to the shows. So what's your process for choosing artists like for that event, let's say? What was the process? Did you have like a huge list and then you just no, we've, been to a lot of shows. Yeah. we've been to a lot of shows, so we've been able to assess the talent that is out yeah. there, and there's so much. Um, stage presence is number one. Mm -hmm. Stage presence is one of it, but also can they deliver an experience that the fans want to be there to enjoy? Mm -hmm. yeah. And with the artists that we decided to pick, we think that they can all do it. We've all seen Joe Dolo, Ciela turn up before they really get the party started. Handro gets busy, King K, oh my goodness, every time I see him perform, there's people out there singing his lyrics back to him, so shout that's always shout a good King vibe. K. That's really important, actually. Like, if, if it's the connection with your fans, right? Mm -hmm. So there's everybody on this lineup has fans that are not just artist peers, that are not just, you know, the immediate circle. They're people who have gone to shows and by virtue of their performance, earned fans you know they pulling up at the blue dogs over and over again or pulling up at the different opportunities that have come up and while there may not be a lot of promoters there is this constant slew of people out there grinding mm -hmm. granted joe dolo and see there maybe they're at a, a different level but <clears throat> what i see is i still grind no it yeah, is but, yeah. but, but like you know they're not maybe as local with their grind they're a little more out of the city with their grind but to me it's like i want to make sure that the people who are gonna be involved in the show understand that everybody involved in the show is what makes it good. And they do that by having connections with their audiences. Mm -hmm. The Joe Dolo was live every day. Andrew's at all these events he doesn't perform at. Mm -hmm. And your buds is make way, you know? Like you can pick each of these people and look at how like regulators and has got the whole- He's everywhere. Fashion line and everything going on. If you look at Jimmy D connected to Craven's crew, they just sold out SOB in New York City, that whole squad, you know? Like all of these people to me, 
are figures in Montreal that are really trying to make way and mm -hmm. do their own thing in the city beyond just the music. The music. Now, you guys, Bridge the Gap, um, Montreal, Hit it Hit Hits, it hits yeah. and Wicked. Wicked Saints. Wicked yeah. Saints. <laughs> so how did y'all hook up and be like, you know what, let's do something together, you know what I mean, us three, and just build that shit? How did that come about? To be 100% honest, it was kind of, uh, it was done on the whim. We came up with an idea of putting on for the city and giving back in a way that we kind of haven't seen before. Mm -hmm. Um, myself, Montreal Hidden Hits, and Wicked Saints, we had come up with the idea of a show, but I've also done a lot of work with Bridge the Gap, Holden Stefan Roy, and if I didn't do this show with him, I don't think it would Be necessarily the have the same effect that we were going for. Mm -hmm. um, I've seen the organizational skills that he has, and I've seen him also do the shows with Mars Events, not another rap show that he's been doing over the last couple of months, mm -hmm. and I see the work and the effort and the dedication that he has and I figured why not work with him. I work with him in a different in a different capacity as well we as an part artist. Of the, like the Kill Team, which is our little collective, Willie Scandal, Smoking Inc, Chris Crow, myself, Showbiz, and Digital Fire and um, DJ Realize. So yeah. like we kinda started booking ourselves a little more as a team because you know it's mm -hmm. easier to sell those tickets at a higher price point for the squad. Yeah. A little tip for everyone out there. Uh don't be afraid to click up. I've done a couple of shows with Russ. Wicked Saints has done a couple of shows and he's done a show a couple of shows too, as well as He's worked with a couple of uh, slightly bigger promoters mm -hmm. and he's Please. helped to bring in some other out of town talent. Mm -hmm. uh, it was kind of a no brainer, the three of us together, we figured we could give the city something special and Canada Day just makes, makes sense. sense. Yeah, yeah no, Rust has also done his fair share of stuff. He started throwing some stuff over yeah. the dog list on it, like ignoring his way. Because <laughs> <laughs> like, it really is important because yeah. like, anybody out there, like, yo, if you got five bills, you can throw a, a blue dog show, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. like for everyone like watching this. I think it's important that to know that like you just need your DJ, a graphic designer. Half these venues, if you say drink percentages, free tickets, you could probably get away with a lot for free if you mm -hmm. say the right language to them. Mm -hmm. And like, but a lot of times, you know, the thing is the investment, you know, because artists, I feel like sometimes they don't believe in themselves like that. Put on a show. They scared to put that money for the show and nobody shows up and that's the, like a bad look nobody's for them. Show but you gotta bring those down, you yeah, know? Let me tell y'all one thing. thing some songs for them. None of y'all know who I was two or three years ago. <laughs> I started throwing things terribly. Like, let's be honest. I have a bootleg looking show compared to everyone else's. My events do not pull crazy numbers, but y'all know my name now. The investment is bigger than what you think in a media ROI. When you plan business strategies, it's three to five year plans. Mm -hmm. You can't be thinking three months. That's so mm -hmm. we might... We might take some L's fiscally on this show, but it's not going to change the fact that everybody involved in the show got their just due. And if anyone takes the L, it's us, yep. not the artist, not the people involved, That's not it. the venue, not the DJ. Everyone's getting paid because yeah. half these people have been paid already. Mm -hmm. So it's not like we're waiting to see what happens. And if you treat it with the respect of the business, then there's no L. You just earn points like exactly, you know, an RPG. Yeah. Straight up, and I, <laughs> trust me, I feel it. <laughs> <laughs> You know what I mean? Most definitely. Because um, I know you guys are artists too, you feel Absolutely. me? Absolutely. Yeah. So how was it like the transition from being an artist to like now a promoter technically? Because now you're putting on for artists. So it's like, in a way you gotta be, <laughs> you can't be selfish, you feel me? Because you gotta put on for other artists. So how, how does that work with you guys? Is it like- It's 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 different. Um, mm -hmm. Everyone treats you different immediately. Because like, yeah. it's, it's really weird. Like all of a sudden, <laughs> Everyone's like, why didn't you remember me? And I'm like, hold on, there's so many slots on the card. Like maybe I didn't even have a say sometimes, but, but this, you're gonna get hit. It's like, it's it's different, but I'm gonna put this a out there, but maybe all these people don't necessarily show up at things. So you start seeing, who doesn't? you start seeing the honesty in people's words versus their actions in a very different way when you're the one losing money. Mm. When someone else is losing money, you maybe just don't notice things. <laughs> and that's that's how I can play. Is right. you pay a different kind of attention when you're, you're in the red. Most definitely. <laughs> But at the end of the day, you know, the consumer, that's not really, it's not really like a, his fault or uh -huh. like just come to the event and all that. But it's always good to know that people understand that part, you know what I mean? Because sometimes they just come to the event and 
they don't understand all the hard work and investment that, that it takes to actually have a successful event, you know? So that's fair. We also as a as people in the industry do need to try maybe harder to put that knowledge out there. That's mm -hmm. why like we, we try. Yeah. I'm I'm saying that from a position of trying, but it's like we all have to be willing to lose a bit. Like from what I understand, it takes six to twelve events to, to turn a profit. Mm -hmm. And I learned it's because you don't know anything. You yeah. can only you learn, learn everything through it. Yeah, you live and learn, that's what we say, right? And I don't know. Like, if you don't like other people, a lot of people will complain about events. That's honestly how it started for me. I was just yeah. tired of events starting late. Mm -hmm. Same. And so, oh my goodness. except for what's one, late for you guys? We, so I go out. <laughs> Y'all know the MS event, what time we started. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. So no, no, no. DMS starts No, because no, DMS, I'll take an example. If it says it starts at 7 mm -hmm. to 9, and then for the battles, and then the music starts at 9 to 11, and then the battles start at 9.30, I'm, having been in the crowd listening to the middle yeah. class people waiting, I've heard things as far as are they faking uh, opening the door to <laughs> inflate the line. Not from rappers or stuff, from people who paid money to be there because I'm just in the crowd with them. Mm -hmm. So like, it's whatever you put on the flyer is on time. And then people will give you an hour past doors open maximum in my humble opinion and that's just the consumer that makes sense that makes sense and if you if, if we think about the the, the consumer in montreal mm -hmm. they're not usually people up at 12 something on a thursday with work the next day they're in bed mm -hmm. earlier and stuff so like the, the middle class and stuff so when they like see a ticket start time they believe that like they really believe it yeah hey, man the ms event man we started with uh you know what i mean like shout, out my, lit, shout out to my black yeah. people you know what i mean <laughs> I, I learned not to start at a certain time because we yeah. always late. I'm like, yeah. okay, so it's like that. If I put seven, y'all, sh if I put nine, y'all coming up at eleven. So I gotta put yeah. seven for so y'all to come at nine. So you know what I mean? Exactly so I was it. like, yeah. That's what it is. Guy, and he said that they had that problem. For <laughs> going out black yeah. time. <laughs> so the, the cipher dude was telling me like uh, for the first two hundred events or so that was the problem. Then one day they just started on time every time. Mm -hmm. It took about three months and everybody knew that it started on time on time. So you can train the audience. No, for sure. Hey, next event that's coming up July 7th is a schedule. Let's go. <laughs> Real facts, it's a schedule. I'm about to pull up the it. schedule and y'all know what it is. Y'all know what time to show up and that's how we do it. <laughs> and not, not, people yeah. don't like deadlines when it comes to a show either, I've learned. Well, mm -hmm. so if you start on time and everybody knows that, it makes it a little bit easier. And once everybody gets the mindset that things start on time, it's all right. Now, what's the frequency that you guys plan on doing these events? Is that something that's like so once a month? He's been doing I've been, once a I've month been right trying now. to go for once a month. Like it started for me with this Not Another Rap Show series. Um, last one. The last one, we started in September, I believe. Then August. took the next one. Sure. <laughs> then it was like November, we did one. Then like January, we did one. And then there's just been pitfalls to make it go quicker. Mm -hmm. Then we found a home in NDG at the Wheel Club there. So it's not where this one we're doing on the 30th is, but because we found a home, Mm -hmm. We're able to start to throw them more frequently. So the goal is to try to do an event once a month, but then this one came in, so it kind of pivoted the focus, uh, do something bigger, but on we a have smaller to do scale, bigger. um, I'm trying to run something regularly in DG that is DG not, in the building not gonna cost tracks. as much so that we can do it more frequently mm -hmm. and make it in a place where like it's just not on Saint Laurent. Like, like it's not like he's like a bunch of us are on the West, mm -hmm. and I know it sounds weird, but we don't want no forty dollar Ubers. We want eight dollar Ubers. <laughs> <laughs> Let the people on the East take the hit ones. <laughs> so, so, so the way I'm hearing you speak, that means basically you're not focusing on booking French artists. Absolutely oh, not. Oh. My next event on the twentieth is nice. Ce fois, ce fois, I hit up Witness, he said no. Um, I tried to get more. The gap? I tried to get a couple more, but I think I have two or three French artists that I book. Cause actually, I had that thought. Mm -hmm. But if I'm gonna go to Hoshalaga to rap, they can come to DG. Yep. And I do, I go out to Hoshala, I guess, so yeah. far. But, but, but you, guys, you guys don't mind booking French artists, though? No, 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 not at all, man. No, come on, so yeah. just because they call us in the same way. DM's always open. I'm asking, you know what I mean? Because uh, DM's I see, I see, always open. Br bridge the gap, like you're saying, you know what I mean? I see I see that that's what, that, that what, that's what we need in Montreal, you feel mm -hmm. me? Montreal, There's a big Montreal, gap between the French and English. And you know what I mean? If we can bridge the gap between the two, it's a wrap, man. You know what I mean? That's the goal, for real. Straight up.
And let's say for your next event, how can artists reach out to you guys? Like if someone want to perform, like how does that work? It's just surf five on four on Instagram. Oh, is that simple? They don't, have, they don't have to send, they don't have to send their demo or something. Like that. Still working. I mean, if you want an honest answer, like beyond that, show up. If I've yeah, never yeah, met yeah. you mm-hmm. and I don't know you, yep. you're not a priority. Mm-hmm. You could be like even Dolo. He, I met him at Mural Fest last year, and yeah. I went to his event. He put me on in a sense. So like if I'm and Sila, even at the last DMS event, he hit me during soundcheck. You're holding that sound good. Like these are people I know. Mm-hmm. So if you've never been to one of my events, you've never even put a, a dollar into my events, or I've ne- and they never put me on in a single way. There's a good chance. Or if I've never seen you outside. I, like, I'm just being honest. Thing. Like, but if someone got a lot of skills, but you just never heard about your events too, I mean, you can't be like. Absolutely, but he can pull up to the next one, and he can put that effort in. Because we're gonna keep doing it. And we pull up to other people's events too. So so it's like we see a lot. You might not be on the next one, Mm -hmm. but like I met this guy unique. He 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 told me like, yo, can I be on one? I'm like, nah. When I can, I will. And then I hit him up two events later, and I did. So it's like like you're planning in advance always. So if you really want to be involved in the world of what we do. Come Here's to the world of what we do. There's a whole bunch like regulators is doing their barbecue. So many people are out there trying to push things. Shout out regulators. Come to the corner. We're going out to your corners. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. that's the best way for me, at least. Skills is less important than the relationship. To be honest with you, well, networking that, is key to everything. Oh, trust me, mm-hmm. that I know. <laughs> <laughs> everything. And and something something else that I like that you did uh, for sure the Lady Montreal playlist. And yeah. I mean, this is something <laughs> that uh, so I feel like uh, was much needed, especially for me because I like to discover new music from artists in Montreal. And bro, when I went on that playlist, I'm like, God damn, didn't know there were that many that artists. That's in not even. That's my, not even all of it at all. My question to you, and I think I already asked you that question on when we were at DMS, mom, just to, to put it out there. Okay. How many Montreal artists you think there is? I think if I would ballpark English alone, approximately 2,000 active artists. That's crazy. Active. <laughs> I'm, I'm going like, even the 17 year old on SoundCloud with three songs, because you don't know that in five years he's not a player. It's, you know, you have to be like mad objective with this. So what's active for you? Anybody that dropped anything in the last three-ish years. So if you it. drop one song in three years, you're active? Yeah, but there's a time frame. Not active. One so, song in three years, you're not active. I mean, you know, and I feel this is the problem. A lot of times they slacking like that. They're, they're not, not consistent. They're not consistent but like, enough. There are people that like dropping a song is is you know like it's one objective. Man's could like okay, like you could also be doing nothing with it. So I say mm-hmm. over a three year period, then you phase out. You're no longer on my list in, in my head. You know, like mm-hmm. but yeah, give it an objective thing. It has to just be objective and it has to be measurable. It doesn't have to be the best evaluation. It just needs to be consistent. So you could put it a year for your list, whatever. But even if it's one joint, you know, I haven't dropped anything in six months because life got busy. Mm-hmm. That's not a reflection of how active I've been. Mm-hmm. You know, no, it's like me, you. man. Uh, I haven't dropped anything in two and a half years, but I've been doing shows. I've been. I haven't done anything personally in like two and a half years as far as releasing music, mm-hmm. but I've been doing shows, I've been writing, I've been working on my album, I've been producing, I've been putting in the work. So even though I still don't have that music coming out constantly and consistently, I'm when you're still producing, like, yeah, yeah, but that's enough, that's it still work. It's, it's like if you're if you're a rapper and you're a producer and you haven't dropped songs because you're producing, it's understandable in but a way. The, but when you just do don't drop song. nothing, yeah, you just yeah. drop one song and then we don't hear nothing like, from you and you want to get both for shows. For me, it's just like, it's from a data analyst point of view. Like, mm-hmm. I agree with you <clears throat> in the perception of dope or not, would I consider that guy a content? If we were going to rank people on that list, all that becomes super valid. That guy's probably very long on the list, but we just need an objective way to look at it. So if you've done music at all in the last couple of years and you left it up, you're still paying that distro kid every year. Mm-hmm. Fair enough, bro. If you're willing to spend thirty dollars a year to keep your track, because yo, they don't. Go you have your baby. playlist. I see how many gray names are on yeah. yours. You might see how many are on mine. It's like <laughs> that. They stop paying or something happens, and the song, song gets pulled down, <laughs> and so. It, but yeah. even even mainstream artists, I see that a lot. I think mm-hmm. those ones are more sample issues. I, I guess, yeah. You know? I see that a lot. Sometimes I'm like, damn, the whole album. What's up? <laughs> What's up? What's up? What's crazy. So um again to go back June thirtieth is going down at the Belmont. Yeah. Can mm-hmm. you guys give more info about the show? Who I mean in terms of working to get tickets, uh, again the bill, and sure. uh, what can we expect basically for someone who's never been to one of your events? Um, so basically doors are gonna open at nine and you'll walk into Belmont, Saint Laurent, Montreal for all those out there. Doors open at eight. 
doors open at eight. My bad, it's it's very late on a Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> um, but you walk in at eight and you'll see a DJ blaster playing some hot, oh, hot, get, get hot music over yeah. there. You might see a 448 film setting up a camera because we're going to be filming it and making sure oh, it's going to be a movie, movie made literally because some people say, I'm going to a movie. We're going to pay to have a guy make it a movie after. Yeah. <laughs> um, we're going to try to look into food vendors. This is All a right. maybe. Don't hold me to it, but we've hit up possibly have some food in the back and a couple other people there. There's um, always merch on deck. Definitely. Every artist is going to be always come that pickle stuff. stuff out there. 100% will be on deck. Um, um, yeah, sure, that's all, you know. Um, we do, we do. We have the duffel bag stuff. You go, you go. I get it, I get it. I got patches, though. <laughs> um, but then, um, yeah, so the show's gonna start at nine, like on time, because we, we planned it out, and if we're late, we're gonna fuck ourselves. Whoops, I don't know if we can swear, but let's okay. fuck ourselves in the big picture. Uh, then, uh, you know, the lineups, whatever, but Russ gonna be performing the Kill Team, which is Smoking in, Chris Chrome, Holden Stefan Roy, Showbiz 514, Willie Scandals. Yeah. We we're like, gonna be performing kind of our little collective and uh we try to do it a little wu tangy where it's a bunch of songs randomized you know so you get like more of a click tap experience and um you're gonna have anu buds there you're gonna have hanjo you're gonna hear some dope boy diaries in the building regulators and jimmy d and then our headline that's not the order by the way that's just my memory and then uh, Joe Dolo Joe and Dolo. CeeLo will be headlining. And we got an hour set. An hour. Like we're saying, the headliners do an hour. This isn't going to be like... Like it's like a show for like... Yeah, 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 yeah. I believe that. We're like, not playing with this one. Want, no, like, no. I believe, we're trying to throw a concert. Yeah. 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 Like a real concert and just do it with Montreal people. Gotcha. And that's the, that's what you should expect. As far as where to get tickets, um, all of our Instas, link in bios, but... Ben Bright. Then right there, but the Instas, let them know they don't know HSR like that. 514 for myself. We also got tickets, like physical tickets printed, so you can hit up any of the artists if you do know them, and they'll be able to get you tickets and dodge those Eventbrite fees because nobody want to pay those fees. But if you do, <laughs> link it by HSR 514, Showbiz 514, SHOBIZ 514, or Montreal Hidden Hits. Just hit the DMs, we got you. Yo, for me, Rust, you can check me out at rust.wicked on Instagram, as well as wicked.sings.514. Let's get it. Before I let you go, one last question. Where are the ladies at? At home sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about the event. <laughs> uh, that's a good question. <laughs> this guy said at home sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, at the event, how come you guys didn't think about booking ladies? Any female artists? You know, it's, it's like one of those things where I'll be honest, normally it is something I try to do. Um, I didn't know it wasn't as involved in the booking actively. Okay. I didn't. You know, pass that off to show. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a good point. I'm you not going to lie. I love the ladies They're all doing their thing. Um... Yeah, it's we good got the next one. Yeah, yeah. No, like, <laughs> I can, throw a show I just for you I can assure you that, like, I have ladies on my next card. I book ladies on my last card. I oversight. That's the truth. And it's mm -hmm. something we should prioritize. And it's yeah. something we should think about. And like, yeah, that is our bad. And um, that inclusion stuff to me isn't a joke. And it is something that whatever we gotta make the active effort to have that conversation. So good on you, Fizi, for asking that because I'm almost deaf. It is something we need to remember. DMS has definitely been booking women. And yeah, that's what I'm trying to do at every single event, man. You know what I mean? Because uh, at the end of the day, the, the female artists in Montreal are dope. Like, you know yeah, I, mean? I know at our next one and the 28th, uh, we have of July, Ashley and form, uh, she's rebranded as Order 360 of Ziddy and I'll be there. So we do have a couple of ladies then, but good call. Yeah, it's fun. We can't undo the past at this point. Our good mind, the best is yet to come. You already know it's going down June 30th at Belmont, Joe Dolo. Scylla headlining. Man, don't miss. Get your tickets right now. Holla, my people. Once again, thanks for pulling up, guys. It's a pleasure. Yeah. You're leaving me hanging like that, man. Y'all leaving me hanging like that, man. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate oh, you. Oh, man, I'll be out there for sure, for sure. You already know.